Hey, it's Eric again, glad to see you, and now we're back in my story. So far, I've had little success as a real estate agent, and my first potential real estate purchase fell apart. But the beauty of life is that there's ups and downs. And in 2013, I had an up when I bought my first property and made $500,000 in two years. This video shows you how I did it, and it'll help me out a lot if you hit that like button and subscribe ASAP. My last story video ended with my first potential deal not happening. The lender fell through and I was forced to go back to the drawing board searching for a new property. But it's amazing how quickly it changed because I found an amazing real estate deal way better than the first. The secret to getting a great deal in Los Angeles is having access to the MLS.com. Let's check it out. Here it is. This is the most common marketplace where real estate agents post their listings. It's where I've made three and a half million dollars by just paying $400 a year in membership fees. The key is having a custom search. That search should show the previous day listings up until the current moment that you're searching. That way every day when you search, you're not missing anything. My territory was about 33 zip codes around a 20 minute driving perimeter from where I worked. There are over 500 properties for sale in these zip codes at a given time. That's an overwhelming number of deals to consider but usually they're not worth your time to consider buying. There are typically about 15 properties that pop up a day, which is very manageable. It only takes me about five minutes to know if a great deal has come on the market. I click on list price to sort it from least expensive to most expensive, and then I sift through. This is exactly what I did seven years ago when I saw this building. Here it is, this is what I saw. Three units, 3,011 building square feet, lot size of 8,000, the list price was 1 million, it's in the Pico neighborhood of Santa Monica, 1999 construction, which is new for an apartment building. Most are between 1920 and 1950. There's a front house with three bedroom, two bathrooms, two units in the back with two bedroom, one bathrooms each. There's some parking. The rents are at 2,500, 994, and 956. It was a probate sale, meaning that the owners had passed away and the kids were gonna inherit the building and they had decided to sell it with an agent who wasn't a local area representative. Those two points are usually a sign that a good deal is about to pop on the market. I had switched to a new mortgage broker and was told we would have to put a 25% down payment on any apartment units we bought. We still had 375,000 of capital to work with, so this property would need 25% of $1 million. I was very, very interested. So within hours of this property coming up for sale, I was ready to pounce. So I called the listing agent. Hello? Hi there, this is uh, Eric White. I'm a real estate investor and I wanted to see if that property on 19th Street in Santa Monica is still available. Yes it is. We just came on the market an hour ago. Okay, great. I really want the deal. What makes it happen? What price? Well, I'm already getting tons of calls on it. Okay, well, how about this? You represent me on both sides, so you'll get all the commission, and I will close on this deal smoothly. Can we make that happen? That would be great. But I want this thing done by the end of the day. I don't want to wait any longer. I'll do my best. And later that day, I was under contract on this property. After so much disappointment, I felt like I'd been rejuvenated with excitement. Oh man, I was so pumped up. Now I just had to close on the deal. And truth be told, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't understand the contract or what to do next. The plan was just to put one foot in front of the other. I found a building inspector online to inspect the plumbing, electric, roof, and foundation. And from there, the main thing I needed was the loan of $802,500, which is 75% of 1,070,000. Remaining is the down payment, and with additional fees, it took about 280000 of our capital to close the deal. And 60 days from the start, escrow was done, and we owned our first three-unit building. We owned it. Okay, now what? I could have put it back on the market, and it would have sold for a profit. But that wasn't my goal. I wanted to maximize profit, and I had a plan. The rents on the property were well below what they could rent for, but Santa Monica has a strict rent control, which allows the tenants to stay in their home if they continue to pay rent on time. 
I'd done a lot of research on the ins and outs of rent control. I even went down to Santa Monica City Hall every few days to ask the rent control board questions, and I found a few loopholes. The key to business is finding little details that others miss. There were two rules I discovered. The first was owner occupancy, which allows the owner of an apartment building to move into an occupied unit of their choosing. They have to pay the current tenant a relocation fee, and in my case, it was $21,000. But the analysis works like this. Remember return on investment, ROI? Their existing rent was $994. The market rent would be $2,900. So approximately $2,000 more a month, or $24,000 more a year. It cost me $30,000 to upgrade that unit, so my total out-of-pocket costs would be the $21,000 relocation fee and the $50,000 in upgrades. So $24,000 divided by $50,000 is nearly a 50% return on investment. But that $50,000 isn't gone. That went into the building and increased its value. That $24,000 is what I received over the year for rent. But also there's a second type of return you should think about with real estate. With my $50,000 investment, the value of the property went up $240,000. Your net worth went up this amount, even though you don't have immediate access to this money until you sell it. So $240,000 divided by $50,000 in costs is a 480% return on investment. That's right, 480%. It's unbelievable. Understanding these two types of return is the heart of investing well. The second rent control loophole was huge. For three units or less, if you live in one of the units, the remaining units become non-rent control after four months and you could raise the rate to any price you want. It was a guaranteed way to be able to upgrade this building and raise the rents, which would increase the value even further. If you're gonna own or occupy a unit, it'd be nice to have a friendly conversation with the tenant and have some empathy, rather than just posting a notice on the door, which can kind of be cold. It will avoid a lot of heartache and headache for you in the future. I hired a contractor to help upgrade the interior of the two units, as well as re-landscape the outside of the structures. The bid was 70,000 to do the work. One of the workers on the first day dropped a mirror and cut his wrist open. That's what insurance is for. $110,000 and an ambulance later, the work was complete. The remodel cost 40,000 more than the original bid. This is the case for every single renovation I've ever done. Usually you run about 50 to 100% over budget. If you take on a project, please make sure you have reserves to cover going over. It's just a friendly warning. So let's do the math. I had 375,000 total capital to invest. I spent about 280,000 for the down payment. 110,000 for all upgrades, and I spent about $40,000 in tenant relocation, paying the mortgage, and building costs while it was vacant. The total is $430,000. Yikes, I went over what we had. We had to eat into our savings to afford the final cost of the remodel. The most stressful thing in my life is not having enough liquidity, which is just a fancy word for not enough cash in the bank. I've had so many sleepless nights just dreaming of expenses. There's nothing more stressful. Honestly, I've probably taken off years of my life because of this. So if you learn from this advice, you're welcome for getting to live a little bit longer. And please hit that like and subscribe button. The next step was refinancing, which is getting a new loan based on the new valuation. This pulls out cash from the property and would refill the bank account and hopefully give enough to invest further. We ended up getting a new loan of $1 million with another lender. With that 1 million, we pay back the old loan of 802,500. So after loan fees and closing costs, we put approximately 185,000 into our pocket. That was nice, but not enough to do any further investing. So I decided to sell the property. I listed the building at nearly $2 million. It didn't get much traction at that price, so I did several price reductions until we finally caught a fish. It sold a few months later at 1,700,000. Let's calculate how the investment did. The purchase price, plus closing costs, renovations, tenant buyouts, totaled 1,232,500 invested. So 1.7 million minus that was 467,500. Plus I had some cash flow from tenant rent of about 15,000 and I got 20,000 commission for selling the building. And thus my total profit was $502,500.
We personally put in 430,000 into this property, made that back and got over $500,000 on top. That's an overall return of 116%. Pretty good. It was time to move that money onwards and upwards. We would have had to pay over 150,000 in tax on that 500,000, except we took advantage of the next real estate loophole, 1031 exchanges. And that is definitely a future video. You can just continue to do 1031 exchanges over and over again and never pay any of the capital gains tax. And that is what we did. We bought two more properties, one of which made me $773,000 in profit. But I'll share that with you next time. Until then, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Peace.